is uh, coming on to similarity of triangles. We know that the two triangles are similar if the corresponding angles are equal and the corresponding sides in this are in the same proportion. So let's say this is our triangle ABC. And I will show you how these two conditions are met. And let's say this is our triangle PQR. So now these two conditions are necessary for the triangles to be similar. Either one of them will not qualify the triangles for the similarity. So these both should be true. Okay, now let's say this angle is 40 degree. Angle P is also 40 degree. Angle B is 50 degree. It's also 50 degree. Or let's say it's 60 degree. Angle B is, let's say it's 70. And angle Q is also 70. So 70 plus 40 is 110. And 80, so this is also, let's say, 70. Okay. So now, now the corresponding angles, that is angle A is equal to angle P. Both are 40 degree each. So these are 40 degree each. It's zero okay now angle b is equal to angle q is equal to 70 degree each and angle c is equal to angle r is equal to 70 degree each so that means that the first condition of corresponding angles are equal is met moving on to the second condition let's say this side is six centimeter this is 12 this is 5 centimeter, this is 10 centimeter, this is 4 centimeter, and this is 8 centimeter. Now, if we check or if we find out the sides, the proportion of the sides is the ratio of the sides. So AB by PQ is 6 by 12, that's equal to half. And AC by PR is equal to 5 by 10 that's also half and bc by qr is equal to 4 by 8 that's also half okay so that means that these sides are in proportion ab by pq is equal to ac by pr is equal to bc by qr so our second condition is also true so that means the triangle abc is similar to triangle pqr and this I call it as symbolic form. Now, this symbolic form should be in should be correct because when the triangles are similar, so these two results we are going these two results we are going to get from uh, the symbolic form. So next to angle A, A and P are equal. So next to angle A is angle P, B and Q are equal. So next to angle B is angle Q, C and R are equal. So next to angle C is angle R. And also, if it's AB next to it, it should be PQ. So it's AB by PQ and AC next to AC. If it's AC, then it should go like the same way for PR. If it's BC, if it's BC, then it should be PQR. So this symbolic form is correct. We cannot write it like AB similar, ABC similar to PRQ because in this case, angle a is equal to angle p that's correct but b is equal to angle q so the second position is for angle b and here the second position is for angle r which is not correct so this symbolic form is not correct it should match the angles as well as the sides in proportion okay so now we have <coughs> sorry uh, we are done with the similarity of the triangles and we know what are the conditions for the triangles to be similar. And once the triangles are similar, these two results you will certainly get from, the, from that uh, similarity. So if I say triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF and this is a symbolic form that I, I am given with, so that means that angle A is equal to angle D, angle B should equal to angle E, angle C, angle C should be equal to angle F. So this is because the corresponding angles of similar triangles 
its similar triangles are always equal. So that's why I, I emphasize that the symbolic form should be correct. You cannot write it li like as you wish. So <clears throat> it should be according to the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. So once the triangles are similar, you will get this result automatically and you will get the sides in proportion. So how do we write the sides in proportion? It should be, okay, so if this is the symbolic form that I am given with, so AB should in proportion with DE and BC should be in proportion with TF and AC should be in proportion with DF. So this is how, so once the triangles are similar, these two results will automatically get from uh, the similarity of the triangles and we cannot write these uh, symbolic form of the triangles as we wish. It has to match the angles and it has to match the sides in proportion. Okay, so now, because we are done with the similarity of triangles, so now these two conditions makes the two triangles equiangular because the corresponding angles are equal. So that means the triangles are equiangular triangles. And from these equiangular triangles, a Greek mathematician called a Greek a famous Greek mathematician called Thales, he derived the concept of basic proportion. He derived the concept of a basic proportionality theorem, which is called BPT theorem, or we call also it because of his name. This theorem is also called Thales. Theorem. So let's see what is the basic what is basic proportionality theorem or the Thales theorem and what is the result of this. So the statement says that if a triangle, let's say this is a triangle, and there is a line that intersects the triangle, the two sides of the triangle in two distinct points. So this is a line, let's say. This is the line and it intersects the two sides of the triangles in two distinct points, let's say D and E. Then, okay. So the basic proportionality theorem says that if a line is parallel to the side of the triangle and intersects the other two sides in two distinct points, then it divides these two sides in the same ratio. Okay, so it says that if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle. Obviously, it can be parallel to one side only. To so it is drawn parallel to one side, one side of a triangle to intersect other two sides in two distinct points then two sides are divided in the same ratio. Okay, so according to the BPD theorem, that is if this line, so this is a line that is drawn, this is the line that is drawn parallel to BC to intersect the other two sides in D and E, then the ratio of, then the two sides are divided in the same ratio, that means that this AD by DB should be equal to AE by EC. So that's what basic proportionality theorem says and we are going to uh, write down the proof for that so this is our statement and for the basic proportionality theorem it's given that a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle so let's say 
this is the line that's drawn parallel to BC and it's intersecting the two sides of the triangle a at D and E. So we are given that DE is parallel to BC. And we have to prove that this D intersects the two sides in the same proportion that is AD by DP is equal to AE by EC. That's what we have to prove. And before we prove that, let's uh, make some changes. So let's draw, let's say it's DM perpendicular to draw DM perpendicular to AC and it's EN and EN perpendicular to AB. Okay, and also we have to join D to C and B to E. So let's join them as well. Okay, now moving on to the proof. And now, what we will do, we will find the area of these triangles. So I'm going to find the area of the triangle ADE. So for ADE, AD is the base and AD is the base and EN is the side. So area of triangle ADE is half. The base is AD and height is EN. So let's say this is our statement equation one. And let me take another triangle that is area of triangle BDE. We are going to use the same formula half into base into height, but this BDE, we know that this BDE is an obtuse angle triangle, and we know that the obtuse angle triangle somewhat looks like this. And so this is our triangle, obtuse angle triangle. So this is the obtuse angle triangle and for this if we have to take the height from this vertex so this height comes out of the triangle similarly for this triangle bdc for the triangle b d and e the height is en that is out of the triangle so this is actually this is like this it's e and d and b so this is the triangle and this height is here outside so our base is BD so base is BD and height is EN so I will try to just write it as BD into EN so this is 2 and if we divide these two equations that is if we divide equation 1 by equation 2 so area of triangle ADE upon area of triangle BDE is equal to half into AD into EN upon half into BD into EN. EN gets cancelled, half and half gets cancelled. So let's say this is our equation A. Okay, similarly, <coughs> let's once again find out the area of triangle A, B, A, D, E, but this time let our base be let's our base is now for area of triangle ad our base is a and height is dm so it's half into ae into dm and okay so let's say this is our equation third and similarly uh, under this triangle the R triangle is DCE, so this triangle DCE, so if we take base as AC, so if its base is AC, its height is DM, that is outside the triangle, similar for the one for the BDE, so let me just mark it as, okay, let me just mark it here so that you can understand it. Okay, so for triangle DCE, are we are taking the height from D and it's E and C so this is an obtuse angle triangle and this is the height that's out the, outside the triangle so our base is EC and height is DM so it's half 
into EC into DM. Let's say this is our equation number four, and this is the area of triangle DEC. So once again, let's divide these equations three and four. So this gives us area of triangle ADE divided by area of triangle DEC. That's equal to half into A into DM upon half into EC into DM. DM, DM, half and half gets cancelled. So it's A by EC. So let's say this is our equation B. Okay. So this is our equation B. And if we look at the right hand side of these equations a and b we have almost got our results that is ad upon bd is equal to a upon ec we have got that for but for that the lhs of these two equations should be equal so for uh, the equation a it's area of triangle ad so ad and ad we have that and area of triangle bde has to be replaced with area of triangle dec so had it been BDE, we would have got our result. So if we look at these triangles BDE and DEC, so these are our triangles BDE and DEC. So this is our triangle BDE and DEC. Now these two triangles are on the same base D and between the parallel because DE is parallel to BC. So triangle this now triangle BDE and triangle DEC are on same base. Our base is here on the same base DE, DE and between same parallels D and EC. And we know that triangles between the same base and between the same parallels are equal in area. So we know that triangles on same base and between same parallels are equal in area. So that means area of triangle BDE is equal to area of triangle DEC. So instead of DEE, so instead of DEC, we can write BDE. Now these two sides become equal. So instead of replacing uh, it here, we can just say that this is our equation C and we can simply write from equation A, equation B and equation C. AD by DB is equal to A by AC. So this proves our basic proportionality theorem. AD by, D, AD by DB is equal to A by AC. That's our BPD theorem. And we will use this concept in exercise 6.2. And one more concept I would like to add here is the corollary of BPD theorem. So what is exactly the corollary of BPD theorem? So it's actually the midpoint theorem. So the corollary of the BPD theorem is midpoint theorem and we have already studied that. So uh, it says that the, the, the mid of our BPD theorem says that if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle to intersect the other two sides in at two distinct points then these two sides are divided in the same ratio and let's say if this line is going through the midpoints of two sides then this is parallel to the third side and is equal to half of it that's the midpoint theorem and that is, that is the corollary of bpd theorem so the corollary of bpd theorem says that if a line is drawn a uh, line drawn 
to midpoints of uh, of any two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and is is parallel to the third side let's say that's a midpoint theorem okay so how you can prove that so if let's say d is a midpoint if d is a midpoint that means ad is if d is a midpoint of ab so that means ad is equal to db and if ad is equal to db so that means ad by db should be what how so instead of db we can write ad so now it's equal to one now similarly d is a midpoint of ac e is midpoint of ac so if e is a is midpoint of ac that means a is equal to ec so that means a by ec is equal to a by a should be equal to one so now these two are in same proportion so that means ad by db is equal to a by ec and that's what midpoint theorem says uh, sorry the our things vbd theorem says that a line that is parallel to a side divides the other two sides in the same ratio so the ratios are same that means the line is parallel so that is the corollary of the bpd theorem that is actually the midpoint theorem we can use it other way that is uh, the second one that is if a line is drawn through a midpoint of one side of a triangle parallel to another side it bisects the third side so these two sides these two the midpoint theorem and its converse we have studied in class ninth and that is actually the corollary of the bpd theorem so let's check the second one it says that it's a line is drawn to the midpoint of one side of a triangle so if it's the triangle is abc and a line is drawn let's say d is a midpoint so if d is a midpoint if d is midpoint of ab so that means ad by db is equal to ad by ad is d is in point that means ad is equal to db so the proportion of ad by db is one and now this de is parallel to bc so d is parallel to sorry so now de is parallel to bc and d is parallel to bc means that the sides are in same proportion so that ad by db should be equal to ad by ec and ad by db is one so that gives us a result a by ec is equal to one that is a is equal to ec that means this line also bisects ac that means e that means this line D that was parallel to BC and passing through the midpoint of D, it bisects BC. So the midpoint theorem and the converse of midpoint theorem. These are actually the corollary of BPD theorem. That means these results can be derived from the BPD theorem. We have two questions for that as well. And that sums up our BPD theorem and the similarity of triangles. Thank you for watching.